Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. This is such an incredible crowd. I'm from Brooklyn, and um, I was just telling someone that usually um, most of the readings I have, I know everyone in the audience, because we just listen to each other read, like, every week. The same people listening to the same people read. It's really fun um, and narcissistic. But um, it's so, I, I just, I, you've made my trip, which I really hate flying. So, and we had to go over Canada, so it took extra long to get here. So, but um, thank you so much. And um, thank you to Peg, who is clearly has magical powers. Um, so, uh, and, um, oops, sorry. So I, my novel, Cutting Teeth, uh, came out in May. I'm a little sick of reading from it, um, but I'm going to tell you very quickly what it's about. It's about a group of 30-ish, early 40-ish, because they're Brooklynites, um, couples who have young children who go away for a weekend together. And it takes place over a Labor Day weekend. And um, there's seven perspectives, five are uh, mothers, one is a mother who's also a Tibetan nanny. There's a stay-at-home dad who's desperate to maintain his life and wants his wife to have another baby so he doesn't have to go back to work. <laughs> work. Um, but I'm going to read from my new, new novel in progress, um, which I, it just feels so good to read from something new. And it's called uh, The Gypsy Mall Summer, and it's set in the summer of 1992 on a fictional island that is very close to Long Island, which is where I grew up. Um, and it's set in the summer of 1992 during the uh, Gypsy Moth Plague. I don't know if, do you guys have Gypsy Moth caterpillars here? Yes, you do. Okay. Or maybe not yet. They're coming. They'll be here. I've seen one of those infographics where they're like spreading across the country. It'll be okay. Um, so I'm just going to read that. And this is the second chapter, and it's called The Hatching. The first summer fair of the season, the East Avalon Fair, was a coming out party for everyone on the eastern tip of the island. For the children who raced down the fairway, candy apple in one hand, a prize, a goldfish in a water-filled baggie in the other. For the young mothers who'd been cooped up with those same children all winter and who finally had a reason to paint their fingernails and try out that new lip color. Even the elder higher-ups at Gritter Aircraft made a rare appearance in their perfectly creased Air Force blues. The cluster of medals pinned to their uniforms glittering under the carnival lights. They escorted wives fresh from the town and country beauty parlor and draped in pastel chiffon. It was tradition for the Gruder matrons to wear orchid corsages, a medal of a different sort, I suppose. Many of these fair and fragile women were friends of my grandmother, and so I, know, I knew a break in the monotony of their housewife routine, if one can still call herself a housewife with a maid, cook, and gardener, usually meant a trip to the Oyster Cove Country Club for a bridge game, a charity ball, a 4th of July lobster bake. They must have felt giddy with the excitement wearing that exotic flower, its flamboyant fragrance conjuring faraway gardens lush with wild growth, the very opposite of the carefully pruned English garden flowers these same women paid Mexicans from Avalon Point to plant around the cottages of their estates. Bellflower, foxglove, iris, the regal delphinium. The same flowers grew outside my bedroom window around the groundskeeper's cottage on my grandparents' estate, the cottage that had been my parents' home since their marriage. Sorry, pages are sticking together. No one in East Avalon looked forward to the summer fair more than us, the island's teenagers. I dreamt of the fair all through that brutal winter of 92 with its blizzards and the nor'easter that flooded the causeway, the island's only point of egress. 
As I trudge through the knee-deep snow toward the school bus stop, I imagine the fairways stretching across the Avalon Town Square lawn, the carnival lights burning against the sable sky. I could almost taste the cotton candy melting on my tongue. The fair was a present waiting to be unwrapped, held under my bulky sweaters all winter long, keeping me warm. When that night finally arrived, it felt as if the fair was just for us girls. Our party, our coming out, here we are world. We moved down the fairway in a pack, angular hips bumping, newly bronzed shoulders rubbing, our long sun-lightened hair flowed behind us in one stream of fiery light. We tripped across the grass in brand new wedge espadrilles, the bleached rope wrapped around twiggy ankles and tied in a bow under the tight ball of our calves. We wore white, denim, linen, and cotton, so our tanned skin vibrated in contrast. Our bodies were no longer childish, but not yet womanly. Maybe one girl might have sported newly filled out breasts aided by a push-up bra lifted from Victoria's Secret. But I still needed to think of us as girls. I wasn't ready for what came next. And that night, there was an unavoidable sense that we were on the precipice of change, a feverish anticipation in the air, hovering just above the rattle of the popcorn machine, the shudder of the zipper careening over old rails, the sizzle of a sparkler, and then a balloon pops with a crack, a crowd whoops and barks, and suddenly a girl believes in hearts leaping and breaking, exploding and swelling, comparisons that grow tired only with age. Something was about to happen, I believed. How could I not? We were young and beautiful at a time in life when being young and beautiful was the answer to everything. Sometimes when I think of that night at the fair, I don't remember us as a group of teenage girls, but as a pack of young deer emerging after a winter's hibernation. Lovely, yes, but also long-limbed, knob-kneed, and awkward-footed. Our noses sniffing the air, frightened. Or was that just me? Surely not our ringleader, Elizabeth Adams, who everyone called Bitsy, even Principal Haskell, and who was anything but Bitsy, in that she seemed to take up every inch of a classroom, lacrosse field, and dance floor, with her fashion magazine looks and straight-backed confidence. We girls trailed Bitsy Adams through the fair, the strands of her blonde streaked hair like golden threads of honey tying us worker bees to our queen. Thank you.